Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Scott and today we're going to be showing you how to install a Stage 3 spoiler and arrow kit on a C7 Corvette. Hi, I'm Gina. This is our 96 LT4 Collector's Edition. You're watching the Corvette channel. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit subscribe. So today we're going to be installing a Stage 3 Aero Kit and a Stage 3 Spoiler on my wife's 2016 Corvette. So we're going to break this into three separate parts. So in, in the case that you just buy the front splitter or you just buy the side skirts or just the spoiler, you'll be able to fast forward to those or just watch that individual video on its own. So sit back, relax, and we'll be showing you how to do each piece. So before I get started, um, there's a few things I want to touch base on, on what you're going to need. Uh, thank you, Terry. You're welcome. Um, you're going to need a, a nylon pry bar kit, which you can get from uh, Harbor Freight very inexpensively. I think it was $7.99. Um, it does come with the full instruction set for all the different modules that you're going to be doing, because we broke this into three different modules, one for the, the uh, front splitter as well as the side skirts, and also for the, uh, the Stage 3 um, spoiler. Uh, so all the instructions are included, all of the hardware is included, except for the uh, wide sticky tape that you're going to want to use on the front splitter as well as the side skirts. The sticky tape that's used for the stage 3 uh, um, spoiler on the back, it does come with that, but you will not need any other hardware besides that. Uh, as far as uh, Tools, you're going to need a 7mm socket, you're going to need a 10mm socket as well as a ratchet and an extension, and you will need a uh, T15 Torx as well as the, you're going to still have to use your ratchet and the extension for that. Um, besides that, I believe that's all there is that you're going to need besides the nylon pry bar kit. Again, this is from uh, Harbor Freight, you can get these for about $7.99. Um, on my car today, you're going to be seeing, actually, this is not my car, this is Jennifer's car, my wife's car. Um, you're going to be seeing that it's a Z51, and it already has a Z51 spoiler on the back. Now, if you had gotten a base car uh, and didn't have the, uh, the spoiler on the back, um, it comes with a, uh, a template right here inside the box uh, to be able to put that up and know exactly where to drill the holes. Uh, but if you're pulling a Z51 spoiler off, then the holes are exactly the same. You will not have to do any drilling. So just wanted to cover all that ahead of time. Um, so that's, that's about it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with the video and we'll get you going. Okay, this is what we're going to start with. We're going to take these off, both sides, and all these screws right here off. And then that'll be disassembling this part so we can actually put the other one back on. These are all seven millimeter screws. The ones on the end right here are shorter. Remember that. These here are a little bit longer. Nothing will fall off when you take these out <clears throat> because it is on other places. <laughs> okay, that takes all the screws out and the little wind things on the end of them. On the splitter, there's 10 holes. There's five on this side, and they're just guide holes, and there's five on that side. Because of the screws that we're using are not self-tapping, is what I found is if you just put them in and start them, sometimes they'll get cocked because of the threads. And then when you get them in, they don't sit flat, and they're not secure. So it's what I want to do is drill out each one of these holes. There's 10 of them, five on each side with a 3 inch drill, which is the size of these screws, the diameter of them, and they'll slit right in there. So when you put the main screws from the factory on and you put these in, they will all flat. They will secure at a flat surface. Much better bond. Okay, 
So that's what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to drill each one of these out. There, there's already guide holes, so it's not a big, hard thing to do. That's all it is right there. These are all going to be new holes in the bumper, so it doesn't matter. It, they, they don't have to line up with anything. Okay. But the divots that you see down here with the holes in it, them line up with the original bumper things. Okay. And that'll do that. Now what we want to do is we want to put two pieces of double-sided tape. I want to put one here and one right in this area on both sides. Clean that off really good first and then put the double side tape on and we're ready to install it. <clears throat> I'm going to cut a few pieces. There's three holes right here. I'm just going to go to the inside edge of these two out holes and put me a piece here. And then I'm going to go between these two, these three holes, which is actually that one, and put a piece here. Okay. So guys, the, uh, the, the kit comes with everything you're going to need except for this uh, two-way stick tape. Um, so you want to make sure that uh, before you start this process that you run down. Uh, I bought mine at AutoZone, um, and you can get, uh, they have this, the uh, two different um, links. I, I always get the bigger roll, and it's, I think, about $13, $14 for the bigger roll. Um, you don't need that much. Uh, you can get the smaller one, but I always do it because I like to have a little of that extra, uh, you know, when I need it for whatever uh, case may be. So, um, but that's all you're going to need to do. Everything else, all the screws, everything else is included in the kit. Okay, we got the tape on. Now I'm going to take the double side, the other tape off, which Scott helped me with because I have no fingernails. I just got these fat little thumbs. <laughs> so this is... God help me with this. But just take the double-sided tape off. Now we're going to go and put it up by the car. Try not to get this to touch the front space, fascia because it'll get stuck and you can't move it. So without doing that, we're going to put two screws in the center just to hold it up there until we get all the other screws lined up before we want to press up on it. Okay. Okay, now we've got all them bolts in. I always want to kind of check right here just to make that these two center lines line up. We can tighten them up now. Okay. I'm going to start at the center and work my way out. I'm just kind of snugging these up right now, but they should be locked in really good. Okay, got one more right here, I forgot. There we okay, go. Okay, now tightening these up like this is what this has done. It's put that two-sided sticky tape, it's connected to there now. So it's not going anywhere. Okay, okay, now we're gonna start putting these back on. These little, they're little rubber wind restrictors or something. I'm not really sure what they are. These little cosmetic air dams. Okay, <laughs> I'm glad you're helping me out, Scott. <laughs> and then we just line these up. Now guys, you guys could choose not to put these back on. You don't have to. We, we've, we've elected to do it. You're not going to see it when it's on the ground anyhow, but uh, um, we just decided to go ahead and put it back on. Okay. Let me get the other side.
Okay, now the next part is all these holes that I drilled out a little bit bigger, then we're where we're gonna put our screws, which we can start putting in right now. Now you can see guys, <clears throat> look at that. The, the, the fit is like perfect. If it's right here, comes right down like it's supposed to, everything's lining up. Now, we got lucky with this, but you know, in, in different, uh, different scenarios, the bumper might have gotten hit, it might have gotten bumped around or whatever, and you might have to, you know, make sure this gets aligned correctly. So you want to make sure that it looks like that on both sides, otherwise your, your uh, stage three uh, winglet is not uh, going to fit on there correctly. So make sure that this is smooth coming down like so, and that it's smooth coming out this way like that. I'm going to start from the middle right here and work my way out. That's all it is. All it's doing is sucking these two pieces up. And that's about it. There's five of these on each side. And what's helping these is that sticky tape that we put on. That just gives it a little extra strength and it actually pulls it up and seal it up a little bit. Do the same over here, just start center. It's the closest to center. But see what I was doing? If you, if you left them holes just like they were and you happen to put the screw in, it, the threads are at an angle. What it does sometimes, it takes that and moves the screw. So now instead of being flat like that is, nice, they'll be crooked. And it's not really a good secured way of doing it. Maybe just a little bit extra things to do, but it doesn't hurt to make it a, a lot nicer installation. I need one more. And that's the splitter involved. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put the winglets on, but I'd like to drop it down a little bit just so that Scott can show you how nice that is. Okay. <clears throat> but you guys can see here, I mean, let me come back over to this edge. You can see that this is now smooth again. This is flush again, just all the way around. You can see that that is lined up just dead on. Okay, I'm going to put some tape on here. All this is for is just for me so I can mark on here where I want these holes to go. Okay. Now, I want to take these three screws out right here. And I'll put the winglet on, which is right here. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up in here and line it up. And let's put the one in the bottom here. Now this is one additional step that you're having to do. I mean, Terry's having to put this on and then he's going to have to take it off after he gets the, the tape marked so he can drill the holes. Um, and then we'll have to put them back on. But that's one of the necessary evils about doing this to get okay. it aligned just perfectly. Now under here, back up under here, you'll see where the tape is. Now is what I want to do is, is there's not a hole, it's like a slot at an angle. Let me see so if I what can... I'm doing is I'm just 
marking the very top of it and the bottom and doing the same in the back. Now, when you drill the holes, if you come from the top, you come down a little bit, it gives you adjustments. So that, see these two pieces here? So you can line them up so they're exactly right. So you don't want to drill the hole right at the top of where you put it. You want to come down about halfway in between and drill your holes there. Now we'll take this back off and drill us some holes. Now, I don't know if you can see this, I can, but right here is the top of it, and right here is the top of it. I want to come down about right here, and right about here. So, so what that's going to do, it's going to allow it to go up or down, so that I can adjust this on the winglet, so they're perfect. You can use a quarter inch drill. It's, this one is one size less than a quarter. But a quarter inch, if you don't have this one, a quarter inch will work just fine. Just kind of line that up. And very easy. There you go. Now we need one more right back here. Okay. Now we can pull the tape off. And we have our holes. Now we can get the winglet and we'll put it back on again like we did in the first place. Now before you tighten these up, just get them started so they don't, the little screws don't fall out. You want to kind of adjust this also to the spoiler. As you can see, it's almost, it's, it's, see, it's just a, see how that's up just a little bit? Mm -hmm. Now when I put the bolt in, I can bring this down before I tighten it and it'll tighten up just like that. What I want to do first is I want to tighten these three screws up because they're lined up to the fascia. Then we can adjust all of this stuff with the bolts. So let's tighten these up. Now that's nice and secure. I put a washer on this end because with that being V like that, it's not a straight hole, so it's gonna walk on you. So what you wanna do is you put that in with the washer, put the nut on the back side, run it up, line up where you wanna be, which should be right about there. Yep, uh, that looks great. And then take a 10 millimeter and just tighten it up is what happens if you take the screw gun and take the drill and try to drill it, that spins so fast that it'll walk it up. This here, by just using a wrench and tightening it up, will keep everything aligned and you can snug it up to work nice and tight. There you go. Perfect. Now we just gotta put one more in the back. And I put a washer on, on both of these. It's because they put, these are cut with like, like slots, so you've got movement in them. And when you do that, they walk on you. And just do the same thing with this. 10 millimeter, tighten it up.
this one's wanting to walk a little bit, so I'll just use this just to hold it. You can just just a regular screwdriver. This happened to be handy for me right now. Okay, this side is finished. Now okay. we can go to the other side and we'll do the same thing. We're going to do the same thing on this side as we did on the other. Take the screws out, all three of them. There's three of them on both sides. Let me just get them untightened here and it's easier to spin them. Okay, one, two, and three. Now, we're just going to take the splitter, or the winglet, and screw it on here. This is, we're going to do the same thing we did on the other side. I'm going to put a piece of tape right down here so that I can line up my holes. I'll put it on first before I put the winglet on, and we can line all that up. Okay, we're doing the same thing we did on the other side, just putting tape on. All this is for is to mark where we want to put the holes. Okay, we're going to put the winglets on just like we did on the other side. And this time here, we'll put it, we'll put it on twice, but this one here is just so we can get our holes lined up for the bottom of the winglet. Okay, let me grab another one here. Okay, the reason I'm just putting two in is because it's less screw I gotta put back in. But this is just to hold it in place because we're gonna take it off again when we get the holes drilled. it the same way we did over on the other side same thing okay now we'll take it off and we can drill a hole Find a mark. Remember to not to go to the top. To about just go about in the middle of it. That gives you adjustment. That one went through easy. Now right about in the same area right here. Okay. There you go. Again, guys, this was just kind of a necessary evil having to screw it on to be able to mark it. So there's a little bit extra work there, but this way it assures that you get it right dead on and that you're not going to have it going, oh, crap, I got it in the wrong spot or I drilled the wrong hole. Uh, just being a little bit extra careful. All of these are nice and snugged up. We can go to the bottom and put our bolts in. Okay. 
I put the front one in first on both sides because that's where your adjustment's going to be mostly. The back's pretty much dead at. Or however. Dead on? Yeah, that's, that's what you say, yeah. Dead on at my age might be something different. <laughs> well, let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I need to keep you around, Terry. We got a lot more installs to do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's put this last bolt in back here. And again, guys, we included a washer on the front side of this uh, on the front side of the, the bolt here, just so you didn't get the, the walking as you're tightening it up. Um, so those two washers on each side are not included in the kit. So um, that'd be something else that you would want to um, you want to make sure you have. Not something you have to have. Um, so it's, it's just a matter of convenience here that we decided to put those in. There you go. All right. Well, guys, this is installation is complete. Yep. Now we're going to move on to the side skirts. There we go. All right. We'll give you a little look-see here, and then we'll be moving on to the next module. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to just this double-sided tape all the way along the bottom of it, just it's a extra security to make sure that nothing falls off and all that. There's a little line right here, and this line is a protective coating that they put up on here and so forth. Well, this is the bottom of it right here. You want to go just just at that or below it a little bit. You don't want it on this edge. You put it on this edge when you put it on. When you look down here, you'll be able to see it. You don't want to see it. So put it just down, maybe not even, maybe a quarter of an inch, about all you need to do. And just run this all the way along. And you can't, don't just stretch it out and put it on because the body curves. Okay, mm -hmm. so you got to kind of line it as you go. Like right about here is where that protective stuff goes away. But if you stay away about a quarter of an inch from this edge, you'll be, you should be fine. Okay, let me cut this off. I'm just going to pull the double-sided tape covering off of it. Now, we'll come up here and there's a seven millimeter screw. There's two of them here. One, as you can see, this here is holding this on, the front. You want this one, the second one back, the one closest to the rear. It's the only one you gotta take off. Now that I've got the screw out and stuff, there's a hole right here. It's the only screw you need, and you just, just get it started like I've done before. Okay, and then come in the back. And make sure that these line up. Okay, so I'm going to hold it here in the middle, and Scott is going to hold that in to make sure it lines up. And we're going to get it right on the body line. The sticky tape is just basically there to get this set up for us screwing it in. Okay. okay, that should be it right there. There we go. Okay. Now I just gotta get these little screws started. And Now we're going to go along and put all the rest of the screws along the bottom. 
I would like to thank Extreme Online Store for sponsoring this episode of the Corvette Channel. Okay. I'll start right here in the middle. There's little holes that they've got that you can, so you can get them started and know where to put them. That's all they are. It's real kind of simple to put in there. Back here. Okay, got another one. Got two more right here. And one in the back. Okay. And we got one right here. And I believe that's the installation to this. There you go. Okay, that should be the installation of that. Okay, on this side, we're gonna do it a little different than we did the other side. We put the tape on the piece. Now we're gonna see <clears throat> that you can do it either way. Whatever's convenient for you, then it can be done either way. Thank you, Scott. Mm -hmm. Now, I still want to put it down here the same way and put this screw in the front first. This lines everything up. Let me get this in here where we want it. And then we can start at one end and start working it so we can line it up. How you doing back there? This here looks pretty good. And we are right on. As you can see, guys, right there, that's okay. how it fits, so, right into that lip. Just kind of, with your hand, just hold it there until I get a couple so, screws in it. Okay. So I'm holding it up there like that. Yeah. Okay. We still lined up right here? Well, we are still lined up, yep. Okay. Looks good. Okay. See like that, guys? Look at, this looks great. Look at that. Seam matches right up. Two more, and this side here will be done. One more screw and our arrow is finished. All we have left will, will be the stage three spoiler on the back. Okay, dude, all, all right. All. Take a look at that, guys. Okay. It's like a glove. I want to tighten this screw up in the front. Yep, we used for lining it up, and we're good. Now we've completed the front, uh, the front splitter, and the side skirts. Now we'll be moving on to the next module, which is installing the stage three spoiler on the back of the car. So the next part of this is that we're going to be changing out the factory Z51 spoiler with a stage three uh, Z06 style spoiler. And in order to do that, we have to take the back bumper of the car entirely off. So I'm gonna kind of go over it a little bit while Terry's gathering all of the different tools that we're gonna need to be able to do this. And because we have access to a lift, uh, we're going to cheat a little bit and be able to lift the car up to be able to get to the bottom screws. Now, you will not have to do that. Uh, you can do this on the floor. It just will. It just makes it easier for us to film it and for us to be able to stand underneath and unscrew the screws. But what you're going to be needing to do is, one, you're going to need to be able to get into the trunk. So you're going to pop the trunk open. Number two, what you're going to do is you're going to be pulling this little trim plate right here out. Okay, this comes completely out. 
And you can see that Terry's gonna Terry's gonna do it. It's hard for me to do that with the uh, with the camera in my hand. Okay, but that just if you just finesse it out, it will come loose. Like so. Just gotta keep playing with them. Okay. Just gotta be careful that you don't pull the rubber away from it. You're just pulling the trim out. Okay, just like that. There we go. Just like that. You can leave that inside the trunk. Okay, just like so. All right. Now, the next thing that you're gonna be having to do is you have to take these 15, uh, 15 Torx screws out all the way across the very back of the car. Wish I could do that. Okay. And then at that point, we're going to have, uh, we'll be lifting the car up and we'll be going through showing you all of the different things that we're going to have to do there. There's, uh, there's uh, quite a few little screws that we've got to pull loose. But again, all of this can be done on the, on the ground. Um, the only reason that we're using the lift is just to be able to get a little bit better camera angle on this. Okay, I think everything's off up in here that we need to take off. Okay. Now we can go up and do the rest of the stuff. Right. So now Terry's going to go ahead and he's going to lift the car up. Now again, if you were on the ground, you just would climb underneath. And um, you'll have to take, uh, take some screws loose, so we're going to show you that in a second. After we get all this done, we're going to have to use a nylon pry tool. Then we'll put some blue tape right across here to protect the paint and we'll be have to pry this uh, hit the uh, taillight bezel out because right up in this corner right up here behind this vent is a 15 Torx right here and also on the opposite side right here. There is three seven millimeter screws that are right here. You've got two seven millimeter screws that are right here. If you look up inside here, you're gonna see one and two 10 millimeter screws right there. And then you're also gonna see two more seven millimeter as well as seven more millimeter, seven more, uh, three more seven millimeter screws. Now, once we get those off, we'll be able to pull the two mud flaps that's on both corners here. We'll have to pull them off the car and that will reveal two, um, to uh, T T15 Torx up in here that locks the fender well onto the bumper. Once we've got those those all out, then we'll be able to pull the whole car the uh, the whole bumper off. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna go right across all the way. Computer port, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it's funny is I have to look into that one and see my my 2014 Stingray. That's supposed to be where the um, where the tow hook screws in, but on my oh, 14, okay. there was no receiver inside there, so it's just empty inside. Oh, all right. Uh, so I'm There's wondering back there to mount anything to. Right, but on the 16, there should be. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but I don't know that. I haven't opened that door yet. So now okay, we've got, got these two screws yep. right here, one there and one there, which are yep. 10 millimeter. Okay, these here, there's two of them. This one here seems to be a little tight, so we, there we go. Let me break this one loose. Okay. Now, let me use the gun and I'll run them things out of there. One. Okay, we're gonna take these mud flap things off right here. You can just reach underneath here and kind of gently just start pulling it and it'll pop right off. And so, and it comes off the same way. Come on, there you go. And after you do that, that reveals the two T15 Torx that are right here on each side. So you've got two here on this side and two on the other side. Okay. 
And again, you don't have to, as you can see, you don't have to take the, the tire off the car to be able to get these bolts out, or these screws, I should say. I know it seems like it's a daunting task to do this. Um, it's not hard. You just need to take your time. And like I said, if you follow this video, we're we're not cutting anything out here. It's it's uh, it's pretty much step by step what you need to do. So if you follow this video, you'll be able to do this yourself. Okay. All right. So now. now so just to recap here, we've got we've got all the screws out of the bottom of the car. We've got the two screws out from underneath here where the exhaust is. We've taken all of the screws across the top underneath the trunk lid, as well as that trim piece loose. Now the only thing, and we've got our two T15 Torx out of each side here, as well as the mud flaps. So the only thing that's holding this bumper onto the car now is just the T15 Torx that's hidden up here behind this vent. So Terry's going to go ahead and lower the car down and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some blue tape across here to protect the paint and we're going to use a, uh, a vinyl or a, um, a plastic pry tool to be able to pry this bezel off to be able to get to that screw. What we're going to do here, this is the one part that Terry is always afraid to do. <laughs> um, so he always sticks me with this job because this is the part where this is where the tool touches the paint and he doesn't want to touch that part of it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put tape right up in here like this. And it doesn't probably isn't going to show as well using blue tape on a blue car, but I'm just kind of tucking that paint or the tape underneath. So I'm going to put two layers of tape here like so underneath there. It's like that. So that way when I go to stick this pry tool in here, I'm gonna go in there like so, you can see right there. Now this one has a little bit of gap in it, which is very nice. This is probably the fifth or sixth bumper that we have done like this, where we've changed the spoilers out, and this is the first one that's ever been able to just automatically slide in there. So don't expect this, okay? This We're getting <laughs> lucky on this one. Okay, so now all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pry this out just a little bit. You can see how that just popped loose. It sounds like you're breaking it, but you're not. Just like that. Okay, and then you're gonna get get underneath there. And I'm gonna have to probably come over a little bit more, so I'm gonna put a little more tape on here because I don't want my pry tool to touch the paint. Just like so. Get underneath there again. You can see that I've gotten completely underneath there and I've been able to get this out. Now don't try to force it, don't try to he-man it. Just, just get it so you, you can wiggle it out. It, it will come out. Okay, just like so. You don't have to get the pry tool in there anymore. You'll be able to get it to come loose. It's just, you just gotta take your time. slowly wiggling it okay as you get there now if you get it too much in a bind it will jam right here so you want to try to start to pull it out at the corner a little bit okay so it looks like I might have to put a little more tape on this corner because I'm just getting stuck there, there it went go. okay like so and then you can see it came loose now, and if you look right up inside here, you can see that there's a 15, T15 torque right there. And that's what you're gonna need to be able to take out. Once you get that one out on this side, and you do the same thing on the other side, the bumper will be able to come right out. Okay, so we're on the other side here, and we're just gonna go ahead and start right here in the middle. Now, you can see what I was talking about. I couldn't, the other one fell right into the hole, but it didn't on this one. So you have to kind of help it in there just a little bit. This one's a little bit tight. 
So you can li try to lift up a little bit, and you'll just have to wiggle it. You gotta be careful because you don't wanna scratch the paint. But you can see right there, I just got it in there. When I get, once you get it wedged in, you're okay. As long as you don't let it slide back out on you. Now that's funny that I say that it's, this is one of the hardest ones I've had. So that's funny. There we go. But again, just take your time with this. Don't force it. Don't rush it. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a bunch of chips in your paint. Okay? So just take your time. Okay? Once you get to that point, again, remember, you're just finessing it out. Just like so. It will come. It just takes a little bit of a little bit of wiggle in it. And then if you pull it too much, you'll end up breaking it. Being a bugger, huh? Yeah. There you go. Okay. There we go. All right. Now we're going to take them two screws that he was talking about out of them corners. Pull that tape off. Get that out of the way. And uh, Terry's going to take those screws out, and I'm going to take the camera again. I'm glad of that. If nobody <laughs> can see that, it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay, these screws are up here in these little corners. Okay, come on. There we go. Try not to drop them. Dropping them on the coming outside, probably not as bad as dropping them when you're putting it all back together. Because yeah, you, yeah. That's, that's no fun at all. Okay, got one more over here. Now what we're going to do, we've got all of our screws out everywhere. The only thing we have left to do is we're going to grab the bumper through this hole here, through the vent hole, and we're just going to pull the, the bumper out, and then we're going to set it down onto um, onto this uh, little pad that we created. Now, the box that you got your spoiler in is the perfect height for it. So hopefully you've saved the box, and that you can wrap some you know a towel or a blanket or something like that on the box to protect the bottom of the bumper. But it'll be at the perfect height. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this out, and we're going to set it down on this cushion. I got your side. Okay. And then at that point, what you want to do is something inevitably always will hang. So you're going to want to come and just pull it, pull it free. Okay. Now you don't want to just let this thing fall down. So you want to kind of help support it. So if you have two people, that's wonderful that you can do that. The cabling on the back will pretty much hold it in place. As you can see, we're not touching it now. But you don't want it to, you don't want to take the chance that it falls. So if you've got, you know, a couple people here that's holding it, that is great. It's just that much easier and better. Okay, but you, it, as long as you do this right and you support it with that box and a, some sort of cushion or something like that, you'll be okay. Now, um, now what has to happen? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab the uh, 
I'm going to grab the camera back again and I'm going to come back in here so Terry can show you what we have to do. But we have to take the tail lights out of the bumper because the screws are, are going straight down into the bumper here to get the spoiler off. So we have to get the, the uh, tail lights out of the way. So we'll pull the tail lights out, we'll set them down off to the side over here. And then at that point, we'll be able to get underneath to those screws and we'll be able to get the, the, uh, the spoiler off and then we'll be able to put the new one on. Okay, there's four screws. They're kind of easy to see. There's one right here in the corner. They come out fairly easy. Now this is a seven millimeter screw also, correct? I think they're sevens. Then there's one right underneath here. It has got a little, it's right here, just by this plug. here okay, and the fourth one's right up here and once you get this one out the light should come right out And you just take the light and lay it down just to where it rests nice you don't have to just so it's not doing anything don't try to push it down or anything just kind of let it stay there there's a line right here this is a cable so you don't want to be really pulling it on or anything just kind of let the light kind of lay wherever it feels comfortable this side over here is a piece of cake just lay it down in the bottom Then you just kind of work around. There's one there, and you just kind of work them, and you can feel where they are. Three, and one more right here. All right, the ones that hold the spoiler on are 10 millimeter deep socket is easier and there's two in the corner once you get them broken loose they just come off of your fingers you just go along and feel them you can find them About this time in the in the video, um, every time I'll let somebody let everybody know that if you've decided it after watching this video so far, and you decide that you don't want to do this, and you happen to live in the uh, in California, or want to or want to come to the Sacramento uh, Yuba City area, um, we have a couple different shops that we can do this, and we are an authorized installation uh, center for Extreme Online Store. There, so. There. There is another one up in Reading. If you make an appointment, we can go up in that area also. Right. Yep. So if you if you guys are in that areas uh, or want to drive to those areas, we can accommodate you and we can go ahead and we can do this for you. Um, so if if that's the case, reach out to us at the Corvette Channel at the Corvette Channel at gmail.com and let us know what you need done, um, and um, we'll be happy to give you a quote on it. Okay, now I want to make sure that I got them all, because if you miss one of these and you start trying to pull it off, it's not going to work very well. And I got them all. Okay. So in that case, guys, what we're going to do here, because this part, this part right here of the of your your bumper is exposed and you can see it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put some, some blue tape in here. I'm gonna try to wiggle it down in there. I wanna try to make sure that when I go to use my, 
my pry tool, my nylon pry tool, I'm still not going to hurt the paint. Um, so I'm going to try to get some, get some tape down in there to protect it. Okay, because I definitely don't want, just because I'm trying to put some new gadgets on the car, I don't want to screw it up. He just doesn't want his wife mad at him. Sure don't. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to do that. We're going to just kind of pry up just a little bit, back down. And you can hear the tape is starting to, the sticky tape is starting to crack underneath there, which is good. And it popped it free. So we're just going to walk that all the way over. Okay. It's like so. So we just had to get it started on this one. So there you go. this one came off pretty darn easy. Okay. I would like to thank Eric and his team over at Extreme Online Store for sponsoring the Corvette channel. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do this. Thank you. So what we're going to do now is all we'll be doing is we'll pull this tape back off. We're going to clean the top of this bumper off. Okay, you need to put these little studs in. On one side, there's a, a slotted screwdriver in. You don't want to leave that at, at the top because when you screw them in, and then you don't screw them tight. You just take and just put them, just give them a little quarter of a turn. Just get them a little snug, right? Just snug them up. But make sure you don't, that you put them in with the slot out. Okay, and you just go all the way down. Just keep putting them in. Okay, and give them all a little snug. And we should be ready to go. They give you these, the big ones. But you don't want to use them. You just want to use these. You take a little hole punch. Just kind of get it in the middle. Punch it out. Here I am with the sticky stuff again. And then you just take and keep putting them on each one of them. Just slide them over. There's a sticky side and there's not a sticky side. The sticky side, you want to go down against the spoiler these here are actually like cushions and this these little hole punch are perfect size for doing this now the next step is we're going to take on these you can see these little indentations here and that's where you need to put tape and then a, there's a little bit right along this edge, right in yep. here, this little area. You can put some in there also. Now, just kind of start at one place and measure it out a little bit, how you think it's got to be right about there, and just whack them off. So as you can see, guys, there's a little, hopefully the camera picks it up. You can actually see right where it's supposed to go. So you're just, just cutting it and putting it right on there. Then you just kind of stick it in a little, keep it within the lines. This one here is not as hard as that uh, that red stuff. <laughs> yeah, the two-sided stick tape does not, uh, it's hard to get the get it to start, that's for sure. This stuff comes off pretty easy, so you shouldn't have, you guys shouldn't have any problem with that. So that's what that's supposed to look like. And then he's going to do it on this side over here also. Okay. And then in this, on um, this part of the kit, they do supply the two-sided stick tape that's needed to secure the wicker bill to the, to the spoiler. So you, if you are just doing just the spoiler um, part of it, then you don't have to run to the store to get sticky tape. You've, or they have included that part in this kit. I'm going to move them out there. Now this piece isn't really, really needed, guys, um, but it's... Um, it just makes it for a nice firmer fit, and it's not gonna scratch the uh, the tail light housing, or the third brake light housing, I should say. And because of it being at a slight curve, don't just lay it down because it won't go. It's 
straight. See, it's got like, a, like just a little slight curve in it. Yep. Okay, let me do one more. And if you don't, if the if the ends don't meet, it's not it's not a something that's very critical. Okay. There you go. Okay. All you need to do is just line up the holes. Start with the middle here because it's these things have a little bit of bend to them. And you gotta kinda line the holes up. That. Okay. Now it's all a matter of just putting the nuts back on here. Now. You can actually use the same nuts that came off of the old one onto the new one. I'm gonna put them all on by finger and then I'll pull on it. Okay, right here somewhere there it is. I just go by feel because it's kind of hard to stick my head down there without blood rushing to it. So <laughs> I just kind of do it by feel. Well, Terry, the viewers are probably seeing it better than you are seeing right now because the GoPro is down in the bumper and they can see all the all your hand and the nuts and the screw and. And you get that ratchet and extension and the socket and we'll get her back on. You know what? I'm gonna start in the middle here just because it's kind of a good place to start when you do this stuff. At this point, you, you can go and work from uh, all the way to the other side now. You don't have to put them on real tight, just snug them up so they feel good. Finish up on the other side. Okay. Now we got last two right here. Okay. Gingerly get your light back up. And get this to see it goes in like so. And I grab one of these to put in here. Again, there's four seven millimeter screws that are holding the that holds the the uh, tail light into the bumper. Okay, now we just start tightening these up. We definitely use long screws. <laughs> Okay, now we just move over to the other one and do the same thing. Okay, we'll reach down in here and grab us a tail light. Okay, we'll bring it on up in here and put her in place.
Okay, the lights are in. Okay, so our next step here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to lift the bumper up and back onto the car, and then we'll be able to start putting the screws back together. So we're just going to grab it right here in the vent hole. Make sure you line these orange things up with the slots in there before you push it in. Correct. So okay. we're going to lift it, lift it up and get yeah. it in. There we go. Make sure that the exhaust it clears the exhaust holes. So make right. sure that it's. You gotta go up. Okay, we're good you there. You gotta go up a whole bunch. Uh, there you go. There we go. Now there's, these, there's this little there. lip on the inside edge that I can't show you, but it's where the screws go. You have to make sure that it clears the body. Once it clears the body itself, then this will go on. So okay. and you just slide it in. Just like so. You can hear it click and it's in. Then you just put your screws in. Okay, okay this one here, be very careful because if you drop it in, you got to take the whole back of the car off again. So I need to put my finger right here and try to line it up and I can feel it go in and then just, okay, it started. I'll get the other side started. Then I'll tighten them both up. Okay. okay I'll do the other one on the other side. Okay. Alright, now we're just gonna take these and Okay, that does them screws. Then you can take your trim that we took off, this here, and kind of wipe it off here, and you just snap it right back in place, as I'll show you momentarily. Okay, you just line them up. There's little slots. Just line them up, and you just start pushing them in. Okay, we're going to put these basil, 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 yeah, basil, light covers. We're going to put them on. You just kind of line up. There's li you can see up in here, there's little slots. And these little things here, that's what you've got to line up. And once you get them lined up, it should just snap right in. There you go. And that's all it is. And you just do the same thing on the other side. And that part is complete. You might have to push up a little bit on this just to get this lined up and then it'll go right in. Okay. And we got one more over here. Okay, now we'll start putting the ones across the bottom in. So we're just going to put these screws back in. These are the torques. 
you got to just kind of wiggle it until they get lined up where they go and then they'll go in and uh, this one's right in here and these are t15 torques guys Pretty sure I mentioned that in the beginning when we were taking them off, but that way you're not guessing on the way way getting it finished. Okay, now you just snap this back in place. You want to make sure that this little tab. Yeah. Let's see if I can get around here. Okay. You want to make sure this little tab is underneath. It's in between, like a little, like sandwiched in between them two. And it's here. It just snaps right back in place. Now we're just going to go and put all the bolts back in the bottom. Now these two screws right here, inevitably every car that we've done, they need to be lined up just right. So if you run into a little bit of a problem, it's not you, it's just the fact that the car is, um, there's a couple different angles that are happening. There's like three different pieces that the screw is going through. And so you just need to line it up. Now, the fact that it's up in the air is helping Terry be able to get in there. When you're doing this on the ground, <laughs> um, it's almost, your eyeball is almost right at that hole, and so it makes it really hard to see. So you wanna make darn sure you've got some bright light, a shop light, a, a good strong flashlight or something like that so you can see it. As you can see, it wasn't that hard to, to uh, deal with this up in the air, but trust me, you do it on the ground, and these two screws will be probably the hardest two screws that you do the, in the whole, the whole job. Okay. This is those two T15 torques that we were talking about earlier. Again, you don't have to have the wheels off to do this, but it, you want to have some sort of <clears throat> fairly small ratchet of sorts to be able to, uh, to get in there. There you go. You just got to kind of play with Don't try to screw it in there if it feels tight at the first. Because all you're going to do is you're going to strip out that little piece of metal and it's not fun putting them back in because you got to take all this off back again to get to them. Okay. Snap this back on. Like same thing on the other side. Just make sure you get this in between the bottom piece and then this here will just snap in it's the same thing most of them you just got to kind of wiggle a little bit and they'll go right in the only one you really fight with is, is that one up there that scott was talking about these here are pretty much pretty simple you just want to make sure that you get that little tongue thing that was on the mud flat you want to make sure you get that up in there yeah you want to get it sandwiched in there yeah okay. so we're almost done and under here guys we just got this one last screw 